can everybody see the presentation? All right, so uh, I'll provide the update on the uh, on-farm trials, uh, which we conducted here uh, in Iowa uh, at three of the farms. Uh, came the, uh, the objective, uh, uh, just to bring it up front, you know, we need to document how the ProTechNet material is working, uh, how can we reduce the uh, heat related stress for our plants, especially when they are uh, compared to with row covers. Uh, we are trying to see how ProTechNet and the no ProTechNet system you know, is uh, working here in Iowa. And of course, with, uh, we have some excellent growers who provided good feedback and insight. Uh, uh, so we are you know, looking forward to fine tune our recommendations. So the approach which we took here, comparing the uh, no cover uh, and the uh, ProTechNet, uh, we were fortunate that all uh, the three growers we were working with, uh, each one of them was growing a different crop. So we were able to, uh, and this is this came out to be interesting at the end, so that we can see the effect of this protect net and understand if there is any effect of the crop uh, when we use protect net. Is the protect net better for one crop than the other? And of course, we had three sites: uh, Cedar Rapids, uh, Granger, Iowa, uh, and Grinnell. So uh, the protect net, as you all know, if you handled it. Uh, 300 feet uh, by 25 feet, thanks to Jose and their team who actually cut all the pieces and kept them ready for me when I was heading to install these. So thanks Jose for that and uh, that really helps. And this is the 60 gram material. Uh, I believe everybody used the same material across uh, the, uh, the, the project. Uh, uh, our first site was the uh, Rodale uh, Institute, uh, the Midwest Institute. Uh, uh, planting was uh, middle of June 618. And, and uh, what, what I want to highlight here is that uh, in this case, uh, since there was uh, uh, already a, a good pressure of uh, uh, cucumber beetles around in the region, uh, we dipped our transplants in surround or the kaolin clay uh, before uh, planting so that the ones that are outside are not disadvantaged right from the start. So there was kaolin clay on it, so that protected the plant. Uh, for some time, not a long, long time, but some time uh, uh, against the beetles. Uh, at, at Rodale, our plot sizes were uh, 30 feet uh, long. Uh, we have two data rows, two, are the two outside of the guard rows. We are using the acorn squash, table ace, uh, you know, not on raised uh, plastic mulch. We just used uh, the, the bare ground out there. Uh, we use the wheat fabric. Uh, uh, in this case, and uh, uh, you can see uh, Christine and, and uh, Rachel and, and Gavin helping with the installation of the weed fabric uh, so that we don't have to worry about weed management. And I think uh, moving forward, this is a great strategy for you know, even other commercial growers uh, who, if they are even not organic, I think this reduces tillage and this is a clean way of, of uh, growing the crop. Uh, this is at the end after establishing, you can see the treatments here. We had three reps, uh, ProTechNet and the no cover and, and they're, they're all randomized out there. Uh, the second one uh, was uh, Middleway Farms in Grinnell. Uh, we have uh, two rows there, uh, but the main crop we focused on there was watermelon. Uh, uh, one interesting thing at, 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 uh, at Grinnell, uh, was that uh, we are using uh, weed management uh, through straw mulch. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, this is a great strategy uh, which Jordan has developed, you know, how to apply it in a uniform manner uh, mechanically and not manually. So maybe Jordan can talk about that later, but I think that was a great thing which we observed there. And uh, I think it, it does a good job, maybe not as good as the weed fabric, uh, but still an organic way of, of managing weeds. We installed our sensors, which you see up there, the hobo sensors. This is at the Wabi Sabi farm. Uh, we are using butterscotch. Uh, it's a butternut squash. Uh, in, in, uh, here we used, uh, we, we put the protect net across three rows um, and other places there were two and there was one at, at uh, Rodale, but uh, uh, and Ben is on the line. He can talk more about, you know, how uh, uh, the protein net worked, but it definitely helped, especially with the high wind and also some of the hail activity. 
uh, so I think that's another advantage of using ProTechNet of not only the modifying the temperature, but also helping with some of the environmental factors which we have no control on. So you can see the planting dates were different. Uh, so this is kind of late uh, July because, you know, as you know, uh, uh, weather conditions were not, not appropriate initially. Uh, and so we had to uh, uh, change the planting dates, but it, it turned out well, uh, given that we are growing three different uh, crops. So uh, uh, based on some of the data that was collected from the uh, hobo sensors, uh, this is for the month of uh, June and July. Uh, the temperature, uh, average temperature uh, for the no cover treatment, 79.6, let's call it 80 degree, 80.5 for the ProTech net. Uh, same about one degree difference in July also. So, so this is pretty promising to see that, okay, there is some difference, but not a lot, uh, which makes ProTech net maybe a good option or, or an alternative. Uh, when comparing it with the row covers, which can increase the temperature by three or four degrees. Uh, ProTechNet does reduce the light intensity. And that is something which many of our growers have been asking of exactly how much is it? What is the reduction? So we found that uh, on an average on all the sites, uh, uh, this is average light intensity for the month of June uh, uh, and July. Uh, we see that it's, it's, it's about a 25% reduction in light quality intensity, not quality, but intensity, uh, when using uh, a ProTech net. So uh, it does reduce right, light uh, uh, intensity, but does it have effect on the yield? So, so that, that's another question uh, which many of us are interested in. So at, uh, at harvest, this is at Rodale. Uh, uh, an important thing to show here is that the harvest happened on 8.28. So this plot had seen derecho uh, and it did affect uh, the plants because the uh, protect net was uh, had been removed uh, at, uh, at all the three places it was not on off on it was only on and off we did not put it back and so plants did uh, uh, get battered especially with that the ratio and you can see all the plants kind of you know in, in all different directions but the hoop stayed and Christine can talk more about it so, so uh, that, that's good uh, uh, we graded, we harvested them and graded the fruits into different categories, primarily the marketable and the non-marketable. Uh, uh, and uh, we, do, we did observe uh, quite a lot of sun scald uh, on the uh, table ace here, just because the foliage has been battered so much that now the fruit is exposed. Uh, maybe if the ratio was not there, we would have had less sun scald in the protect net treatment because the foliage was bigger and larger and covering the fruit. So this year, again, uh, very unusual. So we cannot say whether protect net helped, helped the plant grow much and, and help reduce the sun scald. But we did, we did see sun scald um, at the Rodale uh, plot. Right. So the uh, acorn squash shield uh, between the no cover and protect net, this is based on uh, 30 feet plots replicated three times. Uh, there was no significant difference uh, in the number of marketable uh, squash nor the weight, but you do see that the protect net had larger number. Now, in statistics, we should not use the term larger if there was no significant difference, but there is, you know, you can see 28 marketable squash in no cover versus 42. Uh, in the protect net and same ways weight also uh, you know, larger uh, weight. Uh, when it come to, came to insect damage, so some of the uh, squash that was affected by primarily cucumber beetles and squash bugs, uh, we do see uh, that protect net did reduce the number of fruits uh, that were affected uh, by the insects. So you can see nine on an average for the no cover treatment and four uh, for the protect net. Uh, uh, Weight-wise also, same thing exists. There is statistically significant difference that protect net, even though it was not off, on, and on, but the as uh, until it stayed uh, during the pollination pro process when we moved it, it did help to reduce the amount of insect damage. Uh, sun scald, uh, uh, we do see more, I mean, again, not statistically significant, but more in protect net, and that primarily could be the reason because there's more fruit out there in the protect net treatment. So you see more sun skull damage uh, in, in numbers uh, and in weight. 
Uh, watermelon yield, this is at, at Middleway Farm, uh, 40 feet long plots replicated three times. Uh, no significant difference for watermelon. So uh, uh, you can see very close, 21 marketable watermelons in the no cover and about 23 in, in the in the protect net. Uh, weight wise also very, very close, 93.2 pounds and 99.4. Uh, insect damage too, we did not find, but I, I'm sure uh, Jordan will, has his, has, he has a, his hypothesis of how the insect thing worked uh, and it primarily uh, is influenced by when you take the uh, protechnic off and what is growing adjacent to those plots. So insects move across uh, the farm and uh, maybe the timing was such that when you move the protechnic, all the insects that were in other place maybe just came on the plant. And Jordan, you can provide more information on that. Uh, but again, we did not find any significant difference uh, in the number or the weight uh, for insect damage for watermelons. Uh, this is uh, butternut, butternut squash shield. This is at, at the Wabi Sabi farm. Uh, in this case, the plots are 120 feet long. So we, we took all the three rows and we use data from all the three rows so we can have a bigger sample uh, because we had only two replications there. Uh, uh, there is significant difference in the number of marketable uh, butternut squash, uh, protect net 196 versus 154 for the no cover. Uh, no difference in weight, but number wise, definitely there is. And again, insect damage, no statistical significant uh, in the number of fruits, the butternut squash that was affected by, uh, by insects or, or diseases. So we do see that butternut squash, uh, did show difference in marketability uh, uh, when we are using Protec uh, and maybe a bit more than what the acorn squash or the watermelon showed. Uh, this is on the side. I just thought I'll bring it uh, to the group here. Uh, this is a, st a study with ProtecNet we did a couple of years back with, a, with an Amish grower in Kelowna. Uh, this is broccoli. Uh, and just quickly, uh, what I wanted to show you here that in, in this case, we were surprised that the ProtecNet plants were inundated with aphids. Uh, so that everybody knows, I mean, this maybe this, uh, uh, the material which we are using, the 60 gram material, it doesn't exclude the aphids. So aphids do get in. So if, if there is an aphid issue, obviously the amount of spray will be the same for the outside production versus the protect protection. This is not our project, but I thought I'd just bring it uh, to, the, to you all. Okay, my information is there. Again, thanks to everyone, you know, uh, Mark, your crew, and all the grad students who helped. 